Now we'll go into the q and I'll answer as many of your burning questions as I possibly can. And we'll go from there. But if you got to take off, it's okay. We've been here for half an hour. Thanks so much for stopping by. Like and subscribe. All that good stuff. Now let's go to the good stuff. A little Q&A. All right. So. <laughs> Straight legit. 713. Uh, Celsius info. Let's take a look. Let me share my screen. Ah. So, the best place to find some information is usually Twitter. If you're not following me on Twitter, please do so. I do a lot. Hey, there it is. Celsius Network. Let's see if they put anything out. So, they pinned this on June 12th. Uh, well, an hour ago, they did say this. Celsius is working around the clock for our community. It's all hands on deck. There will be no Twitter spaces this week. And seven hours ago, it says it's working as quickly as possible. We'll share information as and when it becomes appropriate. Act in the interest of our community right on top priority. So look, um, I got some flack yesterday for not demonizing Celsius. I mean, is that going to do anything? Is that going to get your money back or my money back or allow it to go on? No, it's not. Again, uh, be a little bit calm. Just... Be a little calm. And uh, if this is all your money, I can understand. I definitely do understand. Uh, but hopefully, you won't do this again. You won't take all your, your, your portfolio and stick it into one centralized exchange and go, sure, it'll be fine. I don't know what to tell you. But um, the thing is, we'll see how it all plays out. Alex doesn't strike me as the guy who wants to do this huge rug pull and screw over everybody and then escape to, where, where would you escape to, first of all? Look, uh, I think he got over, I think some things got over their heads and I think they're, they're hustling behind the scenes to make it, make it uh, work. Let's see if it works. And uh, yes, I still have my port, 3%, roughly my portfolio over there. Let's see if we get it back. That's the plan, Stan. Um, yeah. XRP is too much room to move. XRP army. <laughs> Don't feel sorry for Alex. Remember this. Um, they work for us, not the other way around. Don't forget that. Uh, if Elsie comes back online, we keep money with them? No. No. Yes, my name is Rob. How to staking a ledger. I should do a video. I've been uh, messing around with my ledger a lot lately. So I will show you how to do that video. You can also do loans and things like that, but I can't on it because I'm in the United States. Oh, Brad M. Rob, half my portfolio is staked USDC on Voyager. Thanks for your update. If you were me, would you consider the service at 9% APR? No. Half of your portfolio is on Voyager? Don't do that. That's not a good, that's not a solid plan, right? I look, 9% sounds good, right? No problems, but you never know, right? You never know. Now you're welcome to do whatever you want to and just go, ah, I trust those guys. Like, I love Voyager. I love their team. I was sitting with the team and talking to them at, uh, at uh, Consensus Austin. They told me a lot of great information. Everything's on the up and up. Love those guys. But again, you got to be safe. I'm not here to have a golden anniversary with anybody. I'm just here to make a profit, man. But I do my best to give the right information. So that's, that's what I can tell you. <laughs> this is a good question. Consensus, good stuff. What did you see? Uh, we talked about this in uh, the video on Sunday. So as I understand it, like Bitcoin conference in Miami was more like, look at me, here I am and uh, flashiness. But in consensus, it was, I, I didn't go to Bitcoin Miami. I just didn't. But consensus was more like, okay, and this was everywhere I went. Like, here's the problem. Here's what we're doing to try to fix it. We've got a long way to go. And I even talked about it. I go, look, we're super early. And if you think that, you know, there's a lot of that we're like in the fourth or fifth inning, you're way off base. I was listening to CEOs of different, of like top 30 projects were like, we got a long way to go and we're trying to fix this problem. We got this problem and this problem and this problem. We need to do this, this, and this. 
It's like, we have a plan, but we're just doing, you know, we're trying to execute. And it's, it just sounded to me like, you know, businesses and startups and things like that, they're just getting in that, that right space. So don't get too far ahead of yourself. And remember, like, as far as like, like use cases, the use cases in my personal opinion are weak. They're weak. Uh, that's just me as far as like crypto goes. Now there's some, there's some really good utility out there, but it's few and far between. I know I get demonized for that, but it is what it is. And, and if you think that everything's like the greatest in crypto world, it's, this is nothing yet. Give it five more years. And if you don't believe me, just go outside your, your bubble, your circle and say, hey, what do you think about Ethereum? What are you talking about? What do you think about Bitcoin? Oh, that thing that just dropped like 60%? I would never touch that. So, yeah. Yeah, let's see. So Moonshine Fuel says, it depends if you live in a country that steals 23% of your money every time you DCA out and put it into a fiat, right? You have to factor in the frequency that you do that. Yes, yeah, so that's a, see, it's a good point. And it's one of my downfalls. I'm always thinking like an American, sorry. So it's true. So if you're in a country where like you try to DC out and you put it into fiat, that fiat just gets inflated away. So why would you even do it? So sorry, I should really preface it with that. If you have actually, you know, you could put it on your ledger, because as I remember, USDC ledger seems to be okay. Just put it over there. You don't have to cash out. But uh, yeah, but when you do cash out and it's in petrodollars or whatever, then yeah, it gets, it gets gone real quick. Okay. Oof, Jerry. Please explain how tax work when you take profits. I have doge since, wow, good for you. Didn't sell it to any sense. Ah, not so good. Uh, when take profits, can you reinvest all of it or do you keep the tax portion and savings just investing it? So here's the thing, taxable events. That's what it all comes down to. I can only speak for America because that's the only jurisdiction that I live in. And I can just tell you like, usually what happens is anytime that from moving a crypto from a wallet to a wallet is not a taxable event. So just so you know, you can move it to, to uh, any, any exchange or, or whatever else, doesn't matter. It's when you put that into another crypto, and that could be Bitcoin to Ethereum, that's a taxable event. It could be from uh, Bitcoin to USDC, taxable event, uh, or on any kind of DeFi platform. So like, let's just say that for your, and first of all, I shouldn't even be talking about this because you should be talking to your CPA, but this is just the things that I know. So don't take this as like gospel. So with your, with your Doge, I know like in some businesses, you can take the profits and then reinvest those profits into another endeavor and it's not a taxable event. Here it doesn't work like that. Once you take out those, like let's say you sell Bitcoin at 30,000. Let's say you bought Bitcoin at a penny and good for you. And then you sell it for 30,000. You're taxed on $30,000. So if that's over a year, which it probably is, that's long, that's uh, long-term capital gains tax. That depends on your tax bracket. That could be anywhere between, you know, 15%, probably not, 27% uh, to 33%. That also doesn't make mention of if the different state that you live in. So in California, tack on another 7% or whatever crazy nonsense they have in California or New York. So just remember that short-term, uh, long-term capital gains, usually around 20%. But again, depending on the state that you live in. So I live in the great state of Texas. Actually, I vacation in Texas and I live in Puerto Rico. So just remember uh, that. And you just can't invest in that game. I understand how that'd be awesome, but it doesn't work like that. All right. That was a long explanation. <laughs> uh, hey, Rob, don't you think the overall markets, crypto and tech, were too inflated the past two years? Both went parabolic. And you know what happens to parabolic stocks? So, yeah, of course. I mean, looking back, we all, we all knew it because the Fed was printing so much money. But we were disillusioned. We said, ah, people are getting into Bitcoin because they are afraid of the upcoming inflation of what's going to happen. And they are going to run to Bitcoin. And that was the narrative because they wanted to escape inflation. What really happened was people had a lot of money and even stimmy checks. And they're like, I got to put this into something. Number go up. Bitcoin sounds good. Now here we are. So <laughs> we were overinflated all the way on equities. Crypto, real estate, you name it. Uh, we, we were just super overinflated and now we're going to pay the price. And people say, well, that's pretty awful. 
not really. I mean, if you think about it, uh, there's uh, massive opportunities all abound. Like I'm just waiting for the, I'm, me and the wife are just waiting for a real estate crash. Sorry to say it, but uh, it's happening. Next one or two years, it'll be nothing ever changes. It's all cycles. 2008, 2009, 22, 23. Four year cycles. Here we go again. That's it. Uh, haven't we paid the price enough already? That's what I kept saying to myself in 2018. And the answer is, I hope, I hope so, Mr. Blue. I hope so. And I'm not, I can't tell you because no one's ever right. Like every time I think I know the market, the market just has a way of standing up and slapping me and going, you don't know what you're talking about. And then it does the exact opposite of what I think things are going to happen. So I've just, I'm just here to be uh, fluid and uh, uh, flexible. Uh, Mac, thanks. What do you think about Elrond Network? I don't have any Elrond Network. I know it's technologically advanced and it's great and there's a big, uh, great community. I just haven't invested into it. And remember, just because I don't invest into it doesn't mean it's not awesome, just that I haven't. I'm going to miss a lot of opportunities as they come along. That's just how it is. <laughs> Inflation is transitory. That's a good one. That was funny. My thoughts on Celsius. Uh, I told you already. Uh, I think they're going to work hard to bring things back. I don't think there is a difference uh, between, I, what's the term, destitute and, and, and illiquid. They just don't have liquidity right now because they're getting a lot of things called in. So behind the scenes, whew, that's a lot of work going on behind the scenes. Do I think that they'll be able to you know, pay back their customers? I do. I, I'm cautiously optimistic and people say you're naive. That's just how I see it. And I could be wrong. I hope I'm not wrong on this one and we'll see how it goes. But, uh, as far as like me putting my money back into Celsius, no, I'm sorry. You get it. You get one shot at that and that's it. Would you? That's my question. Would you put your, if, if they open it up, would you, like there's some Celsius diehard fans and they're like, yeah, I'd put it right back. I'm like, okay. I mean, that's fine. It's a great question. Sam says, what kind of real estate are you looking to buy on the dip? Commercial or residential? My wife likes commercial and I like residential. I like residential because the short-term uh, rentals, just a good business. I know like we're going to take a hit in the recession, but look, if, if people don't want a vacation, guess what? There's still going to be some people who need a place to live. And that's when you start to, instead of short-term rentals, you do long-term rentals. So I like residential. For her and commercial, uh, she likes that part. I'll let her do that. She's, she's the brainiac of, the, of, of, this, of this posse, that's all I'll say. Uh, what? Marky Searcy here? Marky Searcy's here. Legend. Uh, yeah, see, and here's another example. Jack says, hey, Rob, I shorted some ADA this week and have made back some loss from UST. That's pretty good. And I'm not going to begrudge anybody that shorts anything. I used to, I used to but it's just a natural progression of uh, the markets. And if that's what you got to do, that's what you want to do. I will just be here when... <laughs> See, you have your, your plan and my plan is just to wait for things to erode and crash down and just to go, hey, I'm going to value cost average like I just showed you guys. That's it. Everyone wants free money. Check my investment. Uh, <laughs> DGENs will use Celsius the next bull run. Yeah. And you guys know that as far as speaking of DGEN, you know I have two channels. One is the, the basic uh, peas and carrots basic stuff as far as like dollar cost average and can be very safe. And then one's called Dan Degen where I take like 5% of my portfolio and just do radically degenerate uh, plays over there. That's if you're just a gambler and just expect to lose everything. It's fun. It's a fun website. It's a fun, uh, fun channel though. And let's see, but some have actually played off pretty well. And I got to tell you the, the, the three that we've done so far is pretty much booing my portfolio. <laughs> Uh, Rob, is it hoping to think that Bitcoin won't drop to below 2017 prices considering all the printing done 
and Fed tightening. I get like I got to tell you, I've heard a lot of brainiacs say that it will never drop below 40, and those same brainiacs will say 30k, and they'll say 20k, and it seems like once we get to a certain level, they're just like, okay, 10k. Or, so I'm just like, nothing surprises me in this market. The question is, how do you react to those situations? I think that is the bigger question. Oh, Alami, uh, I just told you that I think, I think the Fed's going to go 75 basis points. And we talked about Coinbase laying off every, like 18% of their staff. But I said there was some actually good news. Uh, Michael Saylor comes out and said that uh, the margin call is like 3,000 for Bitcoin. It's not going to happen, I don't think. And uh, some pretty good news on Voyager. We talked about dollar cost average, valley cost averaging, and how to be flexible. And you don't have to be so regimented and tight. And, uh, you know, this is the only way to do it. So that was pretty much the whole video. A uh, couple more. Hello from Marshall, Texas. <laughs> uh, like the brands that use fake swimming pools as their background. You want me to throw my cup to prove that that is a real swimming pool. Well, I can't because that's a green screen. No, I'll just do it. Everybody's got a, it's a crappy day anyhow. There you go. All right. Let's see. Why am I, why do I always do it for my pool house? It's because my wife kicks me out of the house. This has been my office for like the last five years. And then I just started to do videos in here two years ago. <sighs> that is an amazing green screen. Now I don't have to wash it. That's right. Big E. My main guy right there, Biggie. Yeah, Beardy. Beardy, also a legend. Beardy, do you still have... Are you still on the uh, moderators? You and Big E should be it. Actually, I should give it to, to... To Marky. Where did she go? Ah, I gotta... Let's see. Damn it, I can't do it here. I'll do it later. Oh, this is good. Bazinga, not concerned, 2018 Bitcoin, 20K. Then fell to 3K. Then back up to 60K, just relaxing, eating popcorn, drinking beer. That part sounds great. Waiting for it to go up. Well, I can't wait tonight. We got playoffs at the, the sand volleyball place and uh, probably drinking afterwards. The good stuff. Miller Lite. Keystone, you know. I, I, like, the, I like the finer things. <laughs> uh, yeah, 100K jump in the pool. David, what cars are you driving these days? First of all, you assume that I have more than one car, David. And second of all, you, you may think that I have actually uh, upgraded. I have not. So I have two vehicles. One is a 2018 Dodge Grand Caravan minivan. Sweet. Greatest thing of all time. Super spacious and everything else. I'm not here to pick up chicks. I've got a great wife. So, and that one, I just, it's paid off. So I'm, I, I love that thing. It's great. Haul everything in the way you want to go. And the second one is I have a 2018 Dodge Ram and that's for all the construction that we have to do for the facility, especially when we do those uh, charity events, those obstacle courses. So those are the two that I have, that we have. And that's it. There's no Lambos. There's no, those things are worthless anyhow. Who the hell would have a Lambo? Ever try to get into those things? Hurts your back. Where's my knees? <laughs> what ledger do you use? Uh, I use, some people use, um, I just use ledger, L-E-D-G-E-R. That's it. And uh, what's the other one? I forgot. Uh, we always go lower than expected, but also higher than expected. That's a good one. Gas fee fees. And last question, is it hot in there? It's super hot in here. And actually, it gets so hot in here that I have to use these, uh, these pads that I, I stick in the, in the freezer because if I don't do that, then, I, then the computer overheats because it's about 90 plus in here and I get all glitchy. So people say, why do you go in here? Because I like the heat. That's why I live in, that's why I live in Puerto Rico and El Paso. So look, that's it. Uh, that's what we got. I want to say, let me make sure. <laughs> Perfect. 
Uh, I want to say thanks again for, for stopping by. I appreciate it. If you liked today's video, thumbs up and subscribe. A lot of things to talk about are very time sensitive, especially these days. And uh, give that a shot. So that's it for today. Thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate you guys. I'll see you on the next one. Adios. Boop.